Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Wednesday, March the 16th, and I hope your day is blessed. Well, mine has been blessed as I've been working this week with the Board of Ordained Ministry, of which I'm a member. And uh, this week we are interviewing uh, candidates for provisional membership with our conference, uh, those seeking to be ordained, either as elders or as deacons. And uh, I've got to tell you, there have been some amazing candidates who have come through uh, for interviews this week. Um, we have much to uh, celebrate and, and it gives us great hope as a church, considering the quality of individuals who are responding to God's call to ministry. Um, I celebrate those clergy who are serving in our church, uh, Bill and Teresa and Brandon and Rhonda, how blessed we are by them. Well, speaking of hope, we certainly um, hope for the people of Ukraine. As I've continued to contemplate uh, the terrible situation um, in Ukraine, it's, um, it's weird, a crazy thought, a sad thought came to me this week, how who would have ever imagined March Madness to be <laughs> war in Ukraine? But that's what we're experiencing right now. Um, Russia is acting like a bully on a playground, uh, picking on um, a child much smaller and uh, weaker. Um, we continue to pray, though, for the people of Ukraine, and they have shown extraordinary bravery. And uh, there are glimmers of hope uh, in the last couple of days, praise God, uh, as the president of Ukraine has spoken of constructive conversations with his counterparts in Russia. Uh, that's the first we've heard of that, um, and um, we need to continue praying as people of faith for peace in spite of all the um, obstacles ahead of that. Let's pray for peace because God can make a way, and uh, let's pray for reasonable minds on both sides of this equation. It's a terrible situation without question, but um, uh, I encourage you to continue praying for the people of Ukraine as well as um, the people of Russia um, and leaders on both sides that they might achieve what seemed maybe impossible just a couple of weeks ago. Um, let's pray for an end to this conflict as soon as possible. In the meantime, though, we are, of course, mindful of all of those whose, li whose lives have been displaced, uh, those who have become refugees, those who have lost loved ones, the countless pain that's been caused unnecessarily on the people of Ukraine. Um, what a tragedy this is indeed and they are still living in the midst of it. So we want to lift them in our prayers, especially. If you are interested in helping out financially, UMCOR does have a special fund to help the people of Ukraine. In the United Methodist Committee on Relief is a wonderful ministry of our congregation, not of our congregation, but our denomination rather. And um, it is a wonderful outreach um, ministry. Oftentimes we speak of UMCOR when we have natural disasters here in our country, such as hurricanes or tornadoes. But UMCOR is also reaching out to the people of Ukraine. We have been putting this in our newsletter the last couple of weeks and we'll continue doing so. If you go under uh, the mission section of our newsletter, you'll find an article on the Ukraine crisis. And there's a link there if you wish to give online. Also, if you want to write a check, if you'll make it payable to Providence United Methodist Church, but earmark it for um, UMCOR and Ukraine, and we'll make sure it gets there. Just to remind you that when we donate to UMCOR, 100% of the funds go to the ministry need of uh, that's being lifted up at that time. We have a special offering once a year where um, uh, those of us in the United Methodist Church can give to the administrative costs of, of UMCOR. But otherwise, when we make a special appeal for funds, all of that money goes to UMCOR, I mean, goes to the disaster or whatever relief um, that's being targeted. So uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to call uh, our church office. So as I conclude this Wednesday word, I thought it might be appropriate for me to lead us in a word of prayer and to share one that I've come across. This is a prayer for Ukraine by Kayla Craig. And I invite you to receive this prayer and, and to receive it in your heart and in your mind as we continue to think of and pray for the people of Ukraine. O oh God of peace, our hearts are heavy and our brains can barely keep up with the breaking news. We don't know what to say or what to do in a world so wounded. So we come to you with heavy hearts, with hearts heavy rather, for all who sit in the crossfires of violence and acts of war. O oh God of peace, be with the people of Ukraine with the mothers who carry babies to subway shelters, with the fathers who hold their heads in their hands, with the children who absorb the traumas of violent acts of powerful men. 
Oh God of peace, we don't know the words to pray for a warring world and all who are vulnerable in it. We don't pretend to know the extent of the damages or what tomorrow or today will bring, but we know that you are a God of peace and we can't bomb our way to Shalom. Oh God of peace, comfort the crying and heal the hurt. Tend the aching and soothe the fearful. Make us instruments of your peace, creating a sacred symphony where rhythms of grace are danced upon and evil has lost its sting now and forevermore. O oh God of peace, hear our prayer. Amen.